Hi everybody, welcome to another Carrera tutorial. I'm Kreitman. And what we're going to do this time through is we're going to look at our particle shader. But before we do, um, it needs to be said that there's a really cool thread going on over at uh, the DAS forums. And uh, it was started by Dimension Theory and it has a lot of really cool examples of uh, what your particle emitter can do. So if you run into a brick wall with your particle emitter and don't and you're not getting the answers that you want, uh, check out some of these and uh, check out some of the cool things you can do with your particle emitter. So, um, yeah, let's go back over here and uh, sh uh, let me show you how to do a couple of things here. Um, first of all, we have a um, we have a particle emitter loaded up and uh, nothing special happening here. We're going to apply a um, particle shader to it. And let's go ahead and do this with color gradient. But you don't have to do it with color gradient. You can do it with what you want to do is take two different states and uh, marry them over time with your particle emitter. Um, have, your, your states will change according to what you put in here. In this case, we're going to do colors. Um, let's go over here and put a particle shader in here. And in our color gradient, we've got blue on one side and we're going to put red in the other side. and let's go ahead and make this age now um, let me show you a little something about the differences in each of the states that you go at now you notice that it starts out blue gradiates into purple and goes a little bit kind of pinkish purple and it should go to red now since it's not doing that you want to jump in here I want it to go all the way to red and it'll only, you only have to go past these little hash marks down here. Uh, it'll only animate over the course of maybe just a couple of hash marks, unless you have a long animation, I guess. But what I found out is uh, if you go over to here, you should pretty much get red during the course of your animation. Oh. During the course of your animation. Starts off at blue. Gets kind of purple over here and becomes red at the end. That's your age. Let me show you, uh, I have some examples uh, made up of what they do. Uh, this is your age um, emitter. Now the only thing that I've changed in, in all of these examples is the um, state uh, that the particle shader is in. Uh, this one is, um, is age and you notice that uh, during the lifetime of the particle, it changes color. L look at the outer um, outer sphere, and it changes color the older it is in the animation, okay, during its age. So there's that. And all these, uh, all these have uh, different values, oh. have different values according to uh, size, mass, speed, and order. Uh, according to what I have in the particle shader. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to size. And this is a really colorful one. Um, I just changed the size in the right hand column of the size uh, in the right hand corner of the size uh, part of our particle creation menu. Now you notice uh, you have uh, age, size, mass, speed, and I would think order. I think this, I thought I was thinking the dispersion angle would be, probably relate to order somehow, but you notice that this goes in the same order as your particle shader does. And if that you know, if any lights go on from that, more power to you. I, I'm I'm still trying to figure it out, but. Uh, yeah, uh, so you notice that uh, I changed the, the values in the right-hand column, and we got this. And it looks very colorful and cool, and uh, uh, there's that. And then we got mass, and I changed the values in the mass uh, part. I think I, I think I brought the value up to 0.50. And uh, 
we got this one. Anyway, you know what? We won't jump back and forth. Let's just we've got mass here. And you notice that uh well, I'm not I'm not really sure how it's affecting it mass wise. Uh, I imagine you could probably animate it over time and, and get a pretty good uh you know, pretty good effect. Uh, the one that really surprised me that I was really surprised about was the speed one. Now, um, in this one, you'll notice that the faster the particle goes, uh, it stay, it's, uh, it's pink. But when it slows down, it becomes blue. Now, keep an eye on this one right here when it comes out. It slows down at the top, hits the ground, slows down again, and changes color. They slow down to blue. Okay, uh, I thought that was pretty cool on that end. Um, and then you have order. And this is the, um, this is the um, order that they come out. You have a certain amount of blue ones, then a certain amount of pink ones, and it should be a certain amount of red ones, but I didn't drag my slider over, so I didn't do that. So dispersion angle doesn't have anything to do with this, but uh, you know, that's, this is what your order does. And I'm having dispersed it a little bit kind of shows uh, a little something there too. Now, um, that's your part. That's your particle shaders, and uh, it's one of the ways that you can really get a, some really cool effects out of Carrera. Um, that being said, uh, you don't have to rely just on your color. You got your glow. You have your alpha. Anything that you can change with your particle shader, you can change in the other channels of your of Carrera. Just keep that in mind when you're doing a render and you're wanting to know if you can do a cool effect. Um, before we go, let me show you one last cool thing about the particle emitter that um, I don't know if, if you know. Now, um, I put a particle shader on, on uh, some volumetric smoke, the old volumetric smoke, or volumetric cloud, I think it is. And... Uh, got a pretty cool effect uh, you notice that it's that this has changed over time the color has changed over time and the smoke's kinda bouncy because I just left it at default and uh, dragged the particle emitter but uh, you know you could change the color of your smoke that way um, not that you'll ever want to do it like that or not or, or maybe you do but uh, there's that and something else that uh, you might not know is that you don't have to just rely on the shapes in your particle emitter. You can put a you could put a fountain into your particle emitter and uh, have it become a particle itself. And the particle the uh, um, fountain is animated as I do this too. It it's animated with its completion slider and it's and it's uh, going through its uh, through its thing. So um, there's that. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on keep an eye on the, uh, on the thread that shows the particle emitter. If you're the particle um, uh, the particle thread, uh, if you're having any problems because uh, the information is kind of really short inside the manual. But uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, that's it for this time. I'm Cripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later.